Hello, welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi, Martin. Yeah, I think the I think the microphone works. Yeah, so you do. Mike, good idea now. Anyone going to FOSDEM? I am. And Jill Wait. as well. Yes, I would be there. I'll be there on Saturday. I guess <clears throat> it's, uh, there's but, some uh, train work that forces me to leave on Sunday. On the uh, on Saturday for me too. Uh, I do a presentation uh, about FFV one. Oh yeah, which, yeah, which room the, is that and when? Uh, media dev room. So in the same room as uh, <clears throat> as Steve, I guess. <laughs> we will meet. Well, there. I'm not doing presentation, but I'll be there. Yes, mm. only only going on Sunday uh, Saturday as well. Um, FFV1 pause them on 2023 yes. in media dev room. What, what, what time? Or you know? Let me check. I will send the link. Okay. Good to know. Uh, three minutes after Dave, we have Dave. Does he have a microphone? Yeah, I have a microphone today. Hi. Wow. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, did we have a meeting in December? Uh, uh, <clears throat> I I believe we had one meeting after uh, after uh, no time to wait. Okay, maybe I missed do, it. Do I need do I need to grab? Do I need to, is that the one you had the the uh, migraine for? Maybe, maybe that's oh, why I'll, I don't I'll, remember I'll, it. I will I will I will chase that down and. If, Okay, um, I probably put the wrong uh, minutes then here uh, to um, confirm. Can you throw the right, correct minutes in there then? Uh, absolutely. The, um, so I probably, yeah, got that wrong. <clears throat> uh, all right, so um, attendees, mostly Meet Echo will take care of that. Uh, we have, uh, uh, Michael. I think I got that wrong. Yes, uh, uh, and, and Michael, Michael, we had a meeting on uh, 
on December 6th, and I just found that. So yes, we did, and I'm moving that now. Okay. Anyone get a chance to read those notes? They, they. I, I will say that they were sent to the the uh, the uh, mailing list. <laughs> Which doesn't mean yes, but <laughs> so it couldn't have been that this is must still be wrong. Okay, you're deleting. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the new, the, the fresh meeting should be in the right place. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So let's um, dive into these. Um, and are there any objections to those to those minutes? Any corrections? No. <laughs> okay. I turned this uh, status thing into a table. Um, Thank you. Codec. Pardon me. Thank you. Codex control FFE1. Uh, Flack is still waiting for Shepard write up, I think. Yes. Okay. And you're the Shepard, right? Yes. Okay. You know when you'll finish that? Not today. Okay. <laughs> Is that is that is that a forecast date that you're putting out there or uh no this was the date the last uh post update okay yeah and yeah and then um I'll put that then um <clears throat> okay Matroska so I saw that uh, lots of merges happened in the last week we had the AD evaluation uh come back and uh let's talk about that in the matroska slot any other updates to any of these documents that we should mention from anybody i mean i think i posted a new version of ffv1 version 4 but it didn't actually have any content differences it was just incrementing no. it to avoid expiration yeah i think you did that on the december 4th probably according to this uh, I went through the. I actually went through the doc through the data tracker. Thank you. Um, oh yeah, somewhere's here. I was supposed to uh, remind you of the note well that you've all seen many times, and the code of conduct to be kind to each other. Having done that, let's go on. Let's talk about Matroska. So. Uh, documents returned from the AD with comments. We had lots of issues merged. Do you want me to pull up, Steve? Do you want me to pull up uh, any issues that are pro giving you problems? Um, I left uh, two. I can put the link while it's 700 and 719. Uh, That's a pull request. Yes. 719 and you, this one? No. Yes. Yeah, 700. yeah. Well, 700 is from the AD review. So basically, uh, I realized uh, from the review that the uh, IETF UUIDs are actually uh, the values inside the bit <laughs> actually have a meaning there are parts in it uh, with different meaning and this is uh, not 
what we have in Matroska. Uh, it was never like that. I don't <laughs> think we could move it that way. So basically, the unique ideas we have in Matroska are not actually UU ideas. So I went back and reverted the change that we made to do that. <coughs> uh, so that's the pull request. I think it's correct. The only issue is whether we keep on naming them UUIDs or we go back to UIDs as before as well. It might be confusing for people if they're called UUIDs, they might expect that they have a special meaning, but then if they read the spec, they see it's not special meaning. Um, um. On the other end, it's nice to keep the name because uh, there's a lot of existing code with formatting and things like that that could be useful. So um, I'm going to mention that actually uh, the UID spec is actually being revised. Um, and I wonder if this version 4, which is random, 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 except for a few bits there and there, um i think that matroska used them as just random just expected them to be completely random yes so what i would say is why not say they are uuids uh version 4 uuids um are recommended to be used but that uh readers must tolerate must treat them as opaque 128 bit strings or uh and um and that's it. Yeah, we can do that. That that way you get to call them UUIDs and uh, it tells people how to generate them, which is just random, um, unless you want some other version, uh, um, which probably you don't. Time ordered. So some of these are, are designed, for instance, to be time ordered so that um, um, they will insert into databases in the particular order, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, you can sort them. Um, uh, and then there's version 8, which is basically, uh, we don't know, do whatever you like. Yeah, so V4 is the one with the most random bits. Yep. So we want that okay. to be uh, UUID V4? I would yes. say just recommend it to use UUID v V4 and expect it to be whatever uh, there. Uh, that's what I would say. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, randomly generated. Okay, let's talk about the other issue then. Do not yeah, so reuse deprecated some, IDs. Yeah, so I wanted to discuss that one as well because uh, basically uh, in the spec, so we have a lot of deprecated ideas, some, a lot of elements that were never used uh, that had an idea assigned to them. So, uh -huh. uh, Technically, right now, the spec says that you could reuse these IDs. And uh, my proposal was to not be allowed to reuse them for maximum backward compatibility. On the other hand, it's, that means we lose a lot of uh, very uh, valuable IDs, especially the ones in one octet, one byte. How uh, many is that? I, it's, I think I listed them in the issue. Um, or in the commit. Yes. So yeah, there's like a dozen up. or more. Uh, so, so where, where so have the they shoot. been used experimentally? When have they been used experimentally? Uh, probably never because when we deprecate something that's because 
no one used it or used it wrong, but mostly never used it. Uh, so is I it out it there can... in the field, in any do mm -hmm. any media? I don't think so. Well, then I would just but say, you, I mean, put them back the in the... Spec put... were pub... The spec were public for like 20 years, so people who found the spec might have used it for something, and we don't know. I mean, for well, what they what were I, used. What I suggest that we do is that we move them, we mark them as uh, returned rather than reserved, um, and we simply instruct IANA to use these last. Okay. That so we would have good. to run out of all of the other uh, one byte codes, which could take us 20 years, or I don't know. Um, and <laughs> then we would come back and use these. Okay. For the two byte and three byte and four byte and five byte IDs, I think we can afford to just lose them. Yeah, there's room. I'm more worried about the one byte. Right. Okay, so I put that down so I don't forget. I'm, I'm capturing that in the notes also, if that's helpful. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that we would have to, ha before we started using them, we would have to have exhausted all the other ones. And yeah. then when we went to allocate them, we would know that they were uh, returned. And so we might actually, you know, that point, ask a question like, is it, has anyone seen such a thing? Um, and, you know, we might get evidence that it's actually out there and it was, then we might, might provide some, um telemetry some reviews the fact that it might be out there <clears throat> or in yeah also context. in the annex i think annex a in the document there's actually each deprecated element as a name and what it and a short description of what it was used for so at least it's not some number that people have to dig to find out right. where it was it's already there in the document so let's mark them as returned um, that way. Uh, I think that's the right term, Spencer. Do you think so? I think so. I think I think that I think that's a perfectly uh, I think that's a perfectly fine term. And uh, someone will tell us what the fine term is if that's not it. We, and and we're yeah. and this is only for the one byte IDs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went through this with DHCP option codes, where, for instance, one of them, which are also one byte. Um, and and worse than that half of those were uh, at one point uh turned over as vendor private or something yeah um and then we we said okay no no there's a different way to do this but like uh like the, the capport working group got a number assigned at first and then discovered uh when doing an experimental deployment that polycom phones all crashed and it's because they had used it as a um uh, a code for their configuration file and uh well they got confused when a, the wrong thing data showed up and they crashed which is really their own fault um uh but anyway capport managed to get another code assigned to it instead to switch codes <laughs> when uh revising the document um so it happens um but it just uh, yeah, it would have been good if we had known that this was used or if someone had done it. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not from me. I, uh, you... I'll do that this weekend and then I'll push a new version which can be sent uh, further. Back to Murray. Okay, that's perfect. Anybody else? Any questions about where we are in this document? I did send I did send the uh, the note out uh, to the group about remembering that this is a uh, the output of a working of the working group. So if there's anything 
that you're curious about in the document, this is an excellent time to point that out. Mm -hmm. Especially if we've made changes since it left the working group. Okay. Should we go on? It'd be good for that. Martin, do you have any flack issues you want to uh, bring up? I guess you're waiting for the write up. We we did have yeah. that. We did have the one question that was and uh, uh, asked today on the mailing list. Oh, I must have missed yes, that. Yes. The, the the document really uh, describes the format and it explains how to decode and to uh, parse it. And there are some remarks about encoding what, what should be written or should not be written. But uh, I was looking at the Opus, um, that's another codec, uh, Opus mm -hmm. RFC a few days ago. And I noticed that they had a section on encoding, so how to encode certain stuff. and. I looked in the MP3 specification, was also a section about encoding. Um, it wasn't really ever in the um, um, scope, but well, I was just curious. Uh, I just wanted to put the question out there whether it would be, well, uh, useful. Well, people tend to focus on getting the decoder right because once you know the rules for the decoder, then you can innovate on the side of encoding within those within that uh, space, um, and uh, every knowing that everyone can do it, and that's what Jerome says here, I guess. Um, um, and people sometimes don't want to nail down the encoder too much because they they feel that it, it unnecessarily um it unnecessarily tells the decoder things that may not always be true right um, yes i agree yeah so i would say that's up to this working group to what extent we we would like to have an example uh of doing this or a reference and i think it's okay that it doesn't have to be normative i think that's the whole point is the encoding is is done which with, with whatever the best technology is right now um and as long as the decoder can can parse it it's it's good right yes yes i agree i was just curious whether everyone everyone uh, was in that line of thinking um so we agree that uh, that there's n there is no need to explain anything about what possibilities there are to encode and what strategies you can just leave that out right I think so. Yeah. I think that was the only one that uh, was mentioned on the mailing list, though. Anything else? Yes, I, I, I had nothing else for flag. Yeah, waiting on the shepherd's write up. Um, I did find a few because I keep experimenting with the uh, flux software, the, the reference uh, implementation. I uh, sometimes find some uh, small details, usually do a pull request for that. So yeah, I think yeah, you're fine to, 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 to keep doing some minor, minor edits as, uh, as we get, you know, uh, thing and into reviews. So, so what will happen next is we'll get reviews from other areas um, and some of them may be extensive and some of them may not, um, but, um, uh, and then we'll get reviews from the area directors uh, and our area director. Right, we've, we've, we've had a couple of documents that have gone all the way through the, or, you know, further than this through the process so far. Um, so, uh, everybody kind of understands the uh, the uh, process here, which is basically uh, it gets out of the working group and then goes to the area director 
then goes to the IETF, including review teams, and then goes to the ISG for uh, final approval. Yeah, it's so we have Martin's a, we have first. a couple couple more steps. Yeah, this is Martin's first time through all, through all of this. That's why I want to make sure he yeah. knows what to expect. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been reading up on how the process went with FFE1 and look what the timeline was. So uh, not to get any, uh, well, uh, it, it might probably be more a, a year or more, I guess, before that. Uh, maybe not. It doesn't, it doesn't have to take that long. I would say uh, I would expect to be finished by June is what I would say. Depends yeah, also I mean, on how quickly the, the, you're able to respond to comments, right? So, yeah, I mean, you're um, you're super responsive, and uh, this is something like an eighty some eighty something page spec, which, you know, at least it's not four hundred pages or something. Some of them are. Yes. Okay. No, nothing else for flag. So I I think I know where we stand and what the next step awesome. is. FFV one. Anyone? Have any idea? No, uh, I know we've been we've been paused on it for some time, and I'm not upset about that. Um, I just want to open the floor if there's something else that no we are said. St still start about that. Okay. Any other business? Um, some of us will be at FOSDEM. I what? Uh, I filled the the link about the FOSDEM presentation. So the FFV1 presentation at cool. FOSDEM with date and time. <clears throat> um, I could say that there is uh, um, a patch for FFmpeg uh, for having FFV1 in MXF, for, for mixing FFV1 in MXF. So it is waiting uh, for merge, so some, some review and merge. For MXF, so FFV1 in MXF, because FFV1 uh, FFmpeg is the reference dec encoder decoder, so it is fine. Yeah, and sorry, I didn't but, catch the word uh, you said. In uh, M MXF, I can write it. M it is a container format. MX. Uh, I will write it. Okay. It's oh. for Michael so, Exchange format. So I've never heard of that container before, but apparently it's something for archival use or uh, uh, for broadcasting. Many uh, a, a lot of uh, broadcasters are using that, that and uh, Netflix also at some point. Um, so it is a very ugly container format, but a, a lot <laughs> used in the broadcasting Kitchen industry. Uh, Everything uh, thrown yeah. into it, right? <laughs> Four different formats. So it is also used now by archive because archive uh, gets some files from broadcasters and so on. So um, so there is a request from archive to have FFV1 in MXF support. So there is already the decoding in FFmpeg, and uh, now there is a patch a pro patch proposal for uh, the mixing. Excellent. Um, yeah, yeah, I we should update the FFV1 document to reference the SMPT specification that describes how to store sure. FFV1 in in MXF. Because we have like uh, a, um, hmm. how to how to use FFV1 in a container section in the FFV1 document. It might make sense to cross reference there. Hmm. I, I will I will send a uh, a, a, a PDF of that yes, too. Thanks. And then I know there's no, uh, in, you know, not much to discuss about version four of FFV1 right now, but I wanted to point out there's um, a small kind of wish list of what could be included in FFV1 version four in the issue tracker of the FFV1 spec. I think there's like four or five. Yeah, it looks like there's five items in there right now. Do we do we want to uh, do we want to add that? Uh, as a topic for next meeting. Um, yeah, I wonder if we could 
Derek uh, Boynton put in two of these issues. Two of them came from Reto. One was from me. Um, Do we have a link? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's oh, the yeah. idea we can book the right people if they want to show up. The Perfect. repository yeah, is somewhere else. Yeah, yep, just yep, the issue there tracker. Go. They're all labeled B4. <clears throat> But it'd be good to like kind of get a list of issues out and prioritize them, see who actually has interest in writing any of this stuff. Right. Okay, so homework is to go read them and have an opinion on them. Sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. If we just wanted to make up opinions, we could do it now, but I think it would be more valuable if we actually do some homework. <laughs> All right. Um, good. Man, you guys Anybody rock. Anybody else? I joined like a minute late, and you guys were already flying, and we're 31 minutes in. Go you. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's because we started 10 minutes before that. Oh, okay. We didn't, we, did, we didn't do that. We did do that. Uh, I, I, connected, <laughs> I connected the left the video empty and went to get water. <laughs> and the, and, so and when you came back, a... uh, the, everybody had taken over. Awesome. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> we'll we'll both trick. try that next time. <laughs> Start the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll see some of you at FOSDEM in a week and a half. Uh, going skiing with my brothers and we might die. You never know. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're we're returning to the mountains. The street, Pardon me. If you cross the street, you can die too. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, my apparently my dad went skiing at this at at this place in in at Charmani, uh around this time just before I was born, and leaving my pregnant mother, you know, alone. And uh, <laughs> now my youngest brother will be doing the same thing as he is expecting a child in the spring. Uh, so this is the last time he'll be allowed to potentially die. Uh, <laughs> and that's about it. All right. So good day. Uh, it, <laughs> Have is, a good day. Is this my big chance to say make good choices? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> Please do. All right. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all. You rocked. Bye. Bye.